Hello and welcome back to another video. So this time I'm going to be talking about the new Hearthstone expansion and then of course the fireside chat panel that happened during the very first day of BlizzCon 2014. Now the good news is that there's actually a lot of really interesting stuff here and there was a hell of a panel, some really fun stuff. Now there are a whole bunch of cards that have been announced. I'm only going to cover the ones they talked about in the panel though. It seems like Blizzard are letting slip in more cards as the con continues, so I'll do a roundup video of every single new card that we know about at the end of the con, possibly on, I don't know, like Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. Now while the new expansion is the big bit of news, there's some other really interesting stuff. So Benjamin Broad came out and talked about stats, balance, RNG, and a few really interesting design things that I think are worth mentioning here. So first of all, he talked about stats and balance, and he said that one of the ways of measuring the worth of a card is how likely you are to win if you have drawn the card. For example, say Pyroblast. Now they found that the worst card in the game was the Magma Rager. 29% of the time it was drawn, the person lost, which is pretty crazy. Interestingly, 47% of angry chicken draws led to the game winning, and the Defender of Argus is around 50%, with one of the reasons um, you know, behind it being a little bit lower is that you can't always play him optimally. If you can play him though, then the win chance goes up to 52%. So this is all pretty interesting stuff, and of course, while these may sound like small percents, you've got to, you know, imagine that it's over every single card that you draw throughout the game, and then of course you need to take the metagame into account. Now, they actually did talk about how this could be a misconstrued stat with Baron Geddon. When he was drawn during a period in October, there was a 56% chance to win with him. And now he was played 70% of the time when drawn, and if he was played, the win chance was 60%. Now, this is a misleading stat because he was only played in a certain kind of deck where he was very strong. So it was interesting just to hear them talk a little bit about balance, and these are a few of the many metrics that they used to determine the worth of cards. Now, he also talked a little bit about the curse of Naxxramas. Apparently, it took an average of two attempts for normal bosses and nine attempts to kill heroic bosses. However, some bosses like, say, Kel'Thuzad took some people uh, like 69 to 70 attempts. I think that was the number that he said, so... Yeah, I feel bad for the person who tried to kill Kel'Thuzad 69 times before finally killing him. That's, uh, that's a lot of work. Now, the next thing that he covered is RNG. And this was, I think, one of the most valuable parts of this panel. So his main focus was about skill and luck and how a lot of people sort of misconstrue that. Most people think that the more luck you have, then the less skill. And that it's really just this kind of bar that is either, you know, pointing towards the direction of luck or the direction of skill. When in reality, it's actually a combination of both. He said that, say, Tic-Tac-Toe is a game with no skill and no luck. Also happens to be no fun. Then if you look at Monopoly, it's very high luck and less skill, which I suppose can be fun if you're not hardcore about it. Then there's Chess, which is basically, you know, no RNG, but a lot of skill. And he said that games like Chess often play out in a very similar manner, and they involve a lot of memorization at the high end. Um, he actually mentioned how one of the top-end chess players in the world suggested randomizing the back row of pieces as a way of making the game a little bit more, well, I think, basically just fun and, and different and less based on memorization. I actually do agree with that, and I think that the more you're basing your stuff off memorization, then I guess the less raw fun you can really potentially have. Now, Hearthstone and Poker at the top right of this, where they've got lots of luck and lots of skill. Skill players can manage luck such that they will win more, and we do see this in the pro scene. He also said that one of the great things about RNG is that it can create more varied situations that will challenge your problem-solving abilities, which increases the skill cap, and there are so many variations that it's not the sort of thing that can be easily memorized. Also, he said that RNG allows for more interesting player stories, so those times when something absolutely crazy happens. And uh, yeah, that's what he had to say on all that. And there's a lot of um, RNG-ish elements in many of these new cards, so I can see why he opened with a bit of a talk about that. So then, let's cover the expansion. First of all, there are over 120 new cards, and as I said, I will do a video covering new cards later on once Blizzard let slip of, um, of more of them. But during this panel, they did talk about the main mechanics and the main ideas and how it should all be playing out. So first of all, goblins are more about blowing stuff up and being dangerous. The example card they gave was the Madder Bomber, which is a card that will hurt everything. And like, you know, it'll like distribute its damage equally, but it can be played tactically. So I think that's pretty cool. He then also said that gnomes are a bit less dangerous and are more just about experimenting. So for an example, the Gnomish Experimenter will draw a card 
um, as its battle cry, but it will transform that card into a chicken if the card is a minion. So there's a bit of risk reward going on there. And of course, if you maybe are building a spell deck, then that could be pretty cool. Now, in addition to these gnome and goblin units, there are new mech ones. Mech is actually a new card type, so this means there are going to be just a lot of fun interactions with, uh, with that unit type. The spider tank is one they just gave as an example of a very basic mech. However, there's a lot of synerg um, synergy going on between all of these cards. One card that synergizes really well is the mech warper. This will decrease the mana cost of your other mechs, so that's pretty nice. Now, there are also some new class cards. For an example, there is a priest mech card called the Upgraded Repair Bot, which will give a friendly mech plus four health. I think it's pretty cool that you'll be able to make class-specific mech decks, and that they can actually make mechs which are suited to classes in the game. I just think that's really sort of cool and thematic. Also, they um, talked about the pre-existing mechs in the game. So things like, say, the Harvest Golem. These are going to be made mech cards. They will no longer be, well, I don't know, just untyped cards that, you know what I mean. So they'll be proper mechs and all of these different, you know, synergies and stuff will apply to them. Another card that they showed off was the Clockwork Giant. Of course, there needs to be a new giant. And this thing's mana cost is based off how many cards are in your opponent's hand. This is pretty cool, and it should be a pretty interesting metagame encounter, according um, to the guys over at Blizzard, because maybe if there's, a, say, a meta play that involves maybe a, like a handlock, where the Warlock has a bunch of cards and then plays them a bit later on, well, something like the Clockwork Giant would actually be a good counter to that. They also showed off one of the new legendaries, the Blingatron 3000. This is pretty cool in that its battle cry actually equips a weapon on both the hand of you and your opponent. Now, this can be used well. Imagine if you're fighting, a, say, a warrior who's just used an Arcanite Reaper. Well, you could replace that with something crap using Blingatron and then get a weapon for yourself. You could also play it at the same time that you play a slime so that you will destroy whatever weapon your enemy gets. I really like the way the legendaries have often got pros and cons, but that you, of course, have got mechanics which can mitigate the, the negative effects of the cons. Really cool. Now, another one of the more unique ideas that they had is that these mechs can be piloted. So, there are some mechs which will essentially eject a pilot when they are destroyed. One example of this is the piloted shredder. When destroyed, it will summon a random two-cost minion. Another one is the piloted sky golem. This is similar, just that it will summon a four-cost minion. And there's a really cool one as well, the, uh, the Sneed's shredder. This is, of course, Sneed from the original Deadmines. When killed, it will summon a random legendary card. I just think that is one of the, that, that's so cool. I think that could lead to some really interesting, crazy matches. So yeah, really cool. Now, another idea that they talked about is tinkering. Of course, it's a bit of a theme in WoW, so they've put it into Hearthstone. There are new cards called spare parts. Now, I believe that these spare part cards don't actually count to the 120 count of this expansion. Now, these basically allow you to augment other cards. There are seven spare parts cards in total. So an example is that, say, the Clockwork Gnome, when it dies, will drop a spare part. And the three spare parts that they shown were, um, one of them gave a minion plus one attack, another plus one health, and another one would swap the health and damage of a minion. So I think that's kind of nice. They also showed another really cool card called the Tinker Town Technician. If there is another mech on the field, then this guy will gain one one and also put a spare part in your hand. So I think the synergy of these spare parts is pretty cool, and being able to augment and uh, kit up your mech should be a lot of fun. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the other spare parts cards are, though, because I'd imagine there may be a little bit more interesting than just plus one health or damage. Now, lastly, he did talk about a new warrior spell. This thing's just so cool. Basically, it does one damage to a random minion, and then will continue doing this until something dies. Imagine the synergy with some warrior decks. I just think that's a, ah, it's just a really cool card. So yeah, now, in terms of how you get these cards, well, there's a new kind of card pack. These will cost the same amount as regular Hearthstone packs, and they will have five cards with the same rarity distribution. These cards can also be made with Arcane Dust, so any Arcane Dust that you have now can be spent on cards from this expansion whenever it comes out, which of course is sometime in December, we just don't know exactly when. Now, finally, they also talked about the spectator mode. This is another really awesome thing. This is going to release with the new expansion, and essentially you can spectate by right-clicking, or no, just by regular clicking on the spectate button on your friends list when people are in the game. And this will put you in the same view as your friend. You'll be able to hover over cards and do all that stuff just like you are in the game. Now, if you're playing, you can see how many people are watching you, and you can also make games invite-only. Finally, you will be able to watch two games in the same client, which is going to be great for Hearthstone tournaments. 
And that really is most of what they talked about. We are actually also going to be getting a new card back and a new board type. So that's pretty cool. And it sort of seems like there might be a Gnomish card back as well. Um, the, the one card back that we're getting is just a general themed one. However, I was just reading in Hearthpone that they had a picture. Um, you know, some of the concept art had a Gnomish themed card back. So we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, new card back, 120 new cards, new board, spectate mode. And I think these cards are just really upping the fun. So yeah, it should be really, really interesting to see. Anyway, that's basically it for the Hearthstone coverage of BlizzCon. I will come back and do a full roundup of every single new card that we know about once the con is completely finished. That's it for me. Let me know what you think about this expansion. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.